Patriot missiles, fighter jets, helicopter gunships. A huge buildup of high-tech weaponry is underway in the Gulf region. It's testament to a growing fear of Iran and its alleged plan for a nuclear weapon. You can't trust them. You can't. You have to take their teeth. And there's another worrying reaction to this fear, a suppression of political and religious opposition. In Kuwait and Bahrain, we find rapid backsliding on democracy. And in Bahrain, an alarming rise in state-orchestrated repression. When they talk about the fear of Iran, they are trying to uh, make people away from their own dictatorships. With events in Tunisia and Egypt inspiring opposition groups across the region, could this increased repression be priming a popular time bomb in the Gulf? Immediately, uh, we were followed by two cars, one silver, one white, and uh, they're behind us, a couple of uh, hundred meters perhaps behind us. From the minute we arrived in Bahrain, we were followed. Our equipment had already been seized at the airport. We've made do with what we can find. I've not been here since 2006, but the place feels different. Driving around at night, the security presence is evident. Armed police at every Shia village. Like Catholics and Protestants, Islam is split into two broad factions. The ruling Sunni Muslim regimes in the Gulf are increasingly distrustful of their Shia communities. Until last summer, Shia villages had seen regular demonstrations. Young men claiming they're treated as second-class citizens, demanding an end to discrimination in housing and jobs, and more democratic rights for the majority Shia population. A harsh clampdown starting in August means demonstrations are a thing of the past. More than 400 Shia from all walks of life have been picked up. I've come here to meet families of some of those accused of terrorism. These women are mothers, wives and sisters of 25 Shia Bahrainis arrested and still in prison for plotting a terrorist coup against the state. They're on trial for funding and organizing terrorist acts. They're telling their stories to a visiting human rights lawyer. He was tortured uh, all his body, but especially on his back. What was the aim? What did they want by torturing him? To confess that he's uh, a terrorist. Term, yeah. Okay. Somebody comes wearing uh, civilian clothes, so you don't know what they are saying. They just try to scare you. And his children actually were looking from the windows upstairs. They just saw how many cars were there outside. There were four cars. Their men are doctors, dentists, engineers, journalists. All the stories tell of torture in prison. I saw this pattern that these people would have been kept in custody for two weeks and tortured, then healed uh, before uh, the authorities uh, accepted the families to pay them visits. And then uh, that these people were threatened and more like... Uh, uh, they, they put psychological pressure on them before the first hearing uh, in the courts. We have uh, seen uh, around 15 of the detainees after two weeks from their arrest in the public prosecution, and there were a very strong sign of the torture. And these signs are still persistent till now, after almost three months in the detention. What kind of signs did you see? 
sign it's clear uh, on their in their legs and their hands uh, uh, electric shock uh, tying to the ceiling uh, beating all over their bodies uh, and there were so many reports which prove that they were be beaten even in their head and their ear <laughs> They are allowing only one from the family to, to go inside the court. Lawyer Mohammed Al-Tajir has been representing a number of the detainees. This wave of repression, he says, stems from a fear of Iran, its possible nuclear weapon, and growing Shia influence. There are fear in the Middle East and in the Arab war, especially about uh, the the rising of Shia, not only in Iran, in Iraq, in Lebanon, and uh, Bahrain, even though it's a tiny country in the Middle East, it has a very strong uh, voice and uh, uh, very strong influence in the, in the, in the Shia world. The Shia majority. Yes, yes, and uh, maybe this is the major part and maybe major fears, but I don't believe that it has anything to do with Iran. But others say that fear is real. Iran is an expansionist state. It's threatened to occupy Bahrain before, so we see it as a serious threat. Kuwaiti MP Walid al Tabtabai thinks the Shia population in all the Gulf states are a worry. Iran uses intelligence services to recruit people in the region for its own purposes. It tries to control the Shiite minorities using their sense of allegiance to Iran. And that's why Iran is so dangerous. He shows me a map of Kuwait and says the danger is the proximity. Iran is almost within sight of their coast. Yeah, Iran is very near to Kuwait. This is uh, 50 kilometers. And along with a possibly nuclear-armed Iran, he says having a Shia prime minister in Iraq means that Kuwait is surrounded by Shia powers. Okay, so you feel that, in effect, Iran is surrounding Kuwait? Yeah, To see the reason for the concern, we need to take a wider look at the Gulf region.